Hello, in this video, we're gonna talk about the intermediate value theorem. I, I think it's pretty easy to, to get from the graph. Uh, notice that I have, here's my function f of x, and it's defined from a to b, and I have these closed dots here. So here's basically what the intermediate value theorem says. All right, so you got, you got this uh, y value here, we'll call f of a, and then we have the y value for b, so f of b. So what it says is if you pick any single y value in here, like uh, this one, for example, we're gonna call that n, because the theorem tends to call that n. If I pick a y value between f of a and f of b, is there a point between a and b that will get you that y value of n? Well, right here. Right? That gives me the y value of n. We call that c1. Uh, we are fortunate to where we got a couple other ones, but that doesn't actually have to happen. All the theorem is going to state is that there has to be at least one of them. All right, now it looks like I have three, but again, the intermediate value theorem just guarantees one. Now that's true for any single y value I pick. So if I pick this y value, well, that would be right here. And if you come down, you, that will be an x value between a and b. So let me write out the official theorem. Now we usually use IVT to denote intermediate value theorem. Now suppose f, your function, is a continuous function on, now this is important, continuous, important, closed interval, important. Okay, so these two are probably the most, they are the most important pieces of this theorem, you know, minus the conclusion of it. Uh, so you gotta be continuous, you have to be on a closed interval. Now let n be any y value, okay, it's any y value, like we said here, between f of a and f of b. So any real number between f of a and f of b, where f of a does not equal f of b, notice that that, y value does not equal this y value. Then the conclusion of the theorem states there exists a c, okay, some x value in between a and b such that that, that x value right, will give you the y value of n that you were looking for. All right, so again, if you came up here and you wanted this y value, then you see that your function is continuous. It's on a closed interval. So the statement of the theorem guarantees us, or the conclusion of the theorem guarantees us this x value right here that gives me the y value of n. Okay, so here's a quick example. I graphed x squared plus one from one, right? From one to three. Now, f of x or x squared plus one is continuous. It is a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous over their domain. So it's continuous on, so if it's continuous over its domain, it's continuous over you know, this little interval here from one to three. It's also closed. So I do have you know, these closed dots here. So IVT okay, guarantees us like the following. So say I pick a Y value, so two, three, four, five. So I pick the Y value of six. IVT then guarantees me an x value between one and three that will give me the y value of six. And I think it's pretty easy to see. If you come over here, there's where I have a y value of six, and you can see the corresponding x value is right there, which we'll call c. Now I can actually figure this out by just setting six equal to x squared plus one and then solving this. So then x is gonna be root five. So right here, that's the square root of five. And I could do this for any single y value between two and 10. If I chose nine, right, then I'll go right here and then I'll drop down. And again, I'm in between one and three. So here's one more quick example. Uh, I have this polynomial, 4x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x, and I want to know if it equals 2. 
Now it's a continuous function. It's a polynomial. All right, so this is continuous. So I'm going to call that f. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the interval <clears throat> 0 to 2. Now it is closed. All right, I have the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in. All right, think of this as a and this is b. So what's f of 0? Well, that's going to be 4 times 0 cubed minus 6 times 0 squared uh, plus 3 times 0. And that's going to equal 0. And then we're going to plug in 2. So that's 4 times 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2. And that equals 14. So f of 0 is 0, f of 2 is 14. So think of it like this. I have, you know, f of x is doing something over here. I don't quite know what it looks like. But I do know that when x is 0, I have a y value of 0. And I know that when x is 2, I have a y value of 14. Right? And, and f of x is doing something in here. All right, I don't exactly know what it looks like, but I know that y equals 2, that's in this range here from 0 to 14, and my function is continuous. So what I have is that the intermediate value theorem guarantees me some x value between 0 and 2 that gives me, I'm going to call that c, that gives me that y value of 2. Now, intermediate value theorem doesn't tell me what it is, right? I got to do something else to figure out what c is. But the intermediate value theorem at least guarantees me this c value that will give me a y value of 2.